What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a few exercises that I like to do in the beginning of practice, sort of like a warm-up routine to get everything going. I think a lot of players struggle with what exercises to do, what which drills they should do um, in the beginning of practice just to get them going. And um, I tend to do this exercises pretty much every practice with all my players just to get their bodies moving, their feet moving, um, really working on that acceleration of the racket. So from mini tennis to hitting from the back, um, we kind of have everything uh, in this quick 10 to 15 minute warm up video. So what I would do is show the clips um, and I will talk over why, why I do it, why I like doing it and why you should be doing it as well. Um, and I think you guys are going, if you add this to your practice routine, uh, you see that by the time you're actually hitting, you're actually, you know, either playing some points um, or doing some more specific training, you'll be warmer and like, sort of feeling better. So a lot of people who watch our videos who are not subscribed, don't be that person. Subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, we also have a bunch of links down below that help the channel if you're buying anything from Amazon or Tennis Warehouse. We've got also AP down there, Spikeball. Um, we also have our merch and our Patreon, so we got a bunch of links down below that does ha do help the channel and we really appreciate it. Um, just supporting us, growing the channel. Um, the more you guys use our links, the more videos, the more time you can spend making videos. So it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, but let's just cut right to the core. I will be talking about each uh, specific exercise, drill, whatever you wanna call it, uh, why I like it. Uh, and why you should be doing as well. Maybe you can add, add this this exercises to your next practice session. All right, so the first thing here is good old mini tennis. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like mini tennis for some reason. I truly enjoy it. I do it every single practice with everyone that I hit. Um, I think some people don't like it sometimes because it's difficult. It's difficult to keep, a, keep the ball uh, in play inside the service box, especially when you're actually trying to hit the ball. Uh, but I find it to be a great way to kind of feel the brush, feel that top spin on your racket, uh, especially if you're working on top spin. And we typically start, you know, a little bit slow, just making a bunch of balls. But with time, what we do is start picking up the pace and hitting as fast as we can. That still goes inside the the box. Um, we, it's a great way to just work on your acceleration, work on that, you know, getting that feel for the ball where you you can understand it, make it go up and down, up and down. Um, I, th I find it to be just an awesome way to to not only work on your top spin but understand top spin. Um, we obviously, um, if you're playing from the back, we wouldn't be brushing the ball as much. But I find it to be a great way to you know work on your acceleration, work on your your hands uh, and that feel for the ball. I love it, and I think you should always be doing it on your practice. So next up, we're still here at mini tennis, but now we're going cross court. Um, kind of the same same idea, keep the ball fast, moving fast. Um, but as you can see here, we are slowly hitting more and more angles. So uh, you see that by the end of it, we'll be fully hitting angles there, really close, close to the net. Um, that's just a, a good way to work on your angles, work on your feel. Um, and it becomes kind of fun whoever can you know make the ball go as close as, a, as possible to the net just something that um, we really enjoy doing um, again just working on that feel working on uh, creating uh, the shot making really sometimes it's not about like just hitting the ball it's about you know shot making creating um, angles creating opportunities so this is a good way to, to do that too where you're gonna see the court from sort of like a different perspective um, but that's what happens on the tennis court, right? You don't play from the same spot all the time. You can make it into a little game. Whoever can you know, keep the ball as close as possible to the net. And then we just move to the back and same thing. We start uh, just regular and we slowly get the ball more and more angle, more and more, ang more angle, more angle, more angle. And again, just a, a fun way to, to start to practice, uh, play around a little bit with your strokes and I find it to be a great way uh, to just keep it fun, keep it uh, engaging, and 
again work on that those like little skills that are often overlooked on our practice sessions All right, so we're still here in mini tennis, uh, this time only slices, no topspin. Um, the game here is uh, we've just played full court, meaning full, full mini tennis court, um, and there's no winners allowed. So we can do whatever with the ball, but no winners. So we've got to keep the rally going somehow, just try to force an error, find a, find a spot where um, the other person would feel uncomfortable and make a mistake. Uh, this is a great way to activate your feet. Sometimes in the beginning of the practice, we're feeling a little little lazy, the feet aren't moving. Uh, so this way, one, you add a bit of uh, of a gameplay because uh, we played a five, played a seven, do whatever you want with it, but just play a game. Um, maybe to five usually is what we do. And you're just going to compete, you're going to run, you're going to um, get creative with the shot making just so you so you're able to force an error, right? And since you can hit a winner, you got to find a way to, to force an error from your opponent. And this is a great game. Um, I do it with uh, a lot of my players. Um, Naomi and I have done it a lot. I'm sure I think I have a video where we do this. Um, so it's just a great game overall. Um, and you, it, it's funny because it kind of translates into uh, what we do uh, from the backcourt, meaning like we you have to play the game with the patterns that you'd play. Um, from the back so this is a good way to um, force an error trying to find the ways to force an error uh, from your opponent and I love this game I think you should try it I think by the time you get to the back you're gonna feel a lot more uh, active from with your feet and you're just gonna be playing better all right now we're in the back but not full in the back yet as you can see I'm inside the baseline uh, both of us are inside the baseline and we're rallying down the middle but we can back up the the red part of the court's lava here uh, i love doing this it's great for a few things one working on my rack ahead speed again uh, making sure i'm accelerating through the shot um, not allowing the ball to push me back regardless of how difficult it comes um, a couple of things that you want to look for here is one making sure your swings are a little bit more abbreviated so you catch the ball in front. The whole objective of the drill is to be able to catch the ball in front of you, uh, regardless of how fast, how difficult it comes. Um, another thing is you want to stay grounded. You see how I'm not jumping at all during these shots. I'm staying really grounded. Uh, and I think a lot of people, you know, they want to be better at hitting from inside the baseline and putting balls away, but they don't spend enough time inside the baseline. Uh, and it's just a different way of playing. It, as you can see, we're not playing too high over the net. We're playing actually really through the court, um, but with a lot of rec head speed. The objective is to make that ball dip really quickly on the other side. So great drill, I love it. I do it pretty much every day, and I think you should be doing too. It's gonna help you be better from inside the baseline um, and just do a better job when you see those shots uh, during match play. Okay, now the opposite of going inside the baseline as you can see I'm really far away from the baseline and now we're hitting the ball a lot more up with a lot more shape um, and I th I also love doing this drill because um, it allows us to really extend our shot len lengthening our shots um, I've seen Federer training before and he does that usually in the beginning of his practices where he's a little bit further back and is really extending his shot uh, really kind of feeling his entire body and I I took that from him um, I love doing this as you can see there's a lot of shape on the shot we're hitting up on it with a lot of top spin uh, you got all the time in the world here because you're further back your your partners further back as well um, so you can work on your footwork you know making sure you're doing your split steps making sure you're loading your legs you've got a bunch of time so there's no excuses for being lazy here uh, but the key is to keep
keep pushing yourself forward keep pushing yourself forward keep lengthening your shots don't just use your wrists don't just, just try to create a lot of top spin just by using your hands no use all of your body the weight transfer into into the shot everything um, I think it's a great way to um, not only extend your shots because the moment you go closer to the baseline I want the same extension I want the same everything that I'm doing here the base everything but just going a little more through the court so it's a great way to to really feel your body feel like you're doing the right things um, and also you know we're all, sometimes we're pushed back on the court when you're when you're playing a point and we don't want to leave that ball short you see like it's easy from back here to leave the ball short so you got to be able to from a tough position on the back you're still gonna hit a deep ball so your opponent doesn't attack you so from here you can find the range um, and I think that's the key with a lot of the exercises in this video where we're finding the range from a lot of different places on the court from inside the baseline from far behind the baseline from an angle position um, we un we need to understand um, the range of the shots that we're hitting from different positions on the court because again we're not always going to be perfectly right behind the baseline stationary with a perfect ball hit to us so this is a great way uh, to lengthen your shots and improve your ground strokes okay and the last drill here is the good old offense defense so right now i'm on defense i'm trying to roll the ball a little bit deeper um and wesley the, my partner hitting partner here is attacking also shout out to wesley he's only 14 he's hitting the ball well huh but yeah um i love doing some offense defense and with this drill progression that you just saw this is the perfect perfect way of ending this encompasses everything good rack head speed making sure um, you're moving your feet well you got to be able to hand, handle the pace so you know the ball is coming fast you're used to that already because you were hitting from inside the baseline earlier you were seeing the ball come really fast to you so just in general a great way to get everything that we just did uh, and put it into one good practice and you know Wesley is going out of here he's going a little more through the court I'm trying to um, keep the ball deep not with too much pace but deep because sometimes that's what's going to happen in the match you can't really hit as hard as you can every ball uh, so that's my goal um, so if you're on defense don't just try to put the ball back in easy for the other person try to actually make it difficult for them to attack because the goal is also for them to attack during difficult situations so um, now we switch i'm going to be a little bit more on offense and wesley is going to try to roll the ball a little bit more as you can see uh, and handle my pace uh, obviously it's a little bit difficult for him sometimes but just in general see that was the ball nice and high um, keeping keeping it difficult for me to attack uncomfortable for me to attack but if you're on offense that's where I want you to, to try to be in this uncomfortable situation where you're attacking 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 but keeping the ball in it's not just making like hitting a huge one or two balls and missing I want you to be on offense um, for two three four five six balls in a row and then maybe eventually you put it away um, so that's the goal offense defense also awesome way to just not hit down the middle but practice with purpose um, I think that's the main takeaway of everything that we did um, in this warm-up session practicing with purpose always not just going and banging 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 the ball um, with no purpose at all here there is a purpose um, and I love this this group progression um, and I think you guys can benefit from it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on, on the comments below if you have about any of the drills. But that's it. I always do this and you should be doing it too. So that's it for this video. Um, as you can see, this is a great little routine that you can have on your practice because um, it has everything. There's a little bit of touch, there's a little bit of footwork. A lot of like racket head speed acceleration and, and just kind of developing a connection with the ball that is not just bang 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 hitting the ball from from the back uh, there's a little bit of finesse to it as well where you know we're doing the the little dinky cross court drills or even like just the touch the touch one that um on on mini tennis that you know help us get activated uh, with our feet and you know kind of creating situations to force an error um, so there's a lot there uh, that I find important again creating a connection with the ball is not just um, 
going out and just let's just hit let's just hit a million times cross score a million times down the line a million times um through the middle um we've got to get creative we've got to keep it fun because otherwise it gets repetitive and you you might lose the interest so um i hope you guys enjoyed uh this video let me know if you guys tried this out how it goes uh it might might be difficult in the beginning but the more you do it the more it gets better even with that the player that I had there in the beginning was a little bit difficult to do the dinky shots and now he's getting better and better. I'm making more mistakes than, than him and those. So uh, with time, you guys will be doing a lot better with it and it will translate into your game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, again, subscribe to the channel. We truly appreciate it. Uh, visit my tennishq.com. Um, got a ton of new articles there. Um, I think we surpassed our you know 50,000 clicks a month mark so thanks for everyone that has been doing that also we got the french open going feather still winning what's going on who's going to take the title now probably not but you know one can dream let us know in the comments below who do you think is going to win the french open i mean it's it's a pretty pretty safe bet usually right um we all we all know but we never know maybe something crazy happens this year all right that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys in the next one